Here we go again. It's been a while since my last video. Why? I'm glad no one asked. My latest hyperfocus has been insects. It started with a few leaf insect eggs. Now I'm building terrariums and incubating, soldering glass, mixing soil, sterilizing moss. I got some jumping spiders from Poland and a bunch of isopods. They are not insects, but whatever. To quote my mom, Varför kan inte bry mig lagomt? Hi, neurodivergent brain and my suffering wallet. I also adopted a second dog named Nala, who stole my heart. How on earth I managed to leave home to go to work, I, I don't know. But I do, but I don't know how. This doll was made in collaboration with these amazing artists. Make sure to check them out, the links are in the description. The theme is pastel fantasy creatures and I call dibs early on the nine-tailed fox. I imagined myself making something super cute, but instead she turned regal, which you know is also fine. So let's do this. Since this is pastel themed, I choose Frankie because her green color is divine. I heat the head with a blow dryer, pull it off and cut the hair close to the scalp. Then I scrape the rests out with a screwdriver before making an incision to take it all out. It's just easier this way. If you think this is going way fast, you can watch earlier videos where I think I'm much more thorough in showing how I prepped that all for customizing. Oh, here, I'm cleaning the paint off with acetone. I remove the tattoo stitches on her arms, legs and neck. The lower arms are fine, the rest of the body melts when you use acetone. So there I have to sand them after removing them. Then I reshape the lips a bit by cutting and sanding super carefully. I was debating if I should make a mask, I don't know why I didn't in the end. I wanted to give her a genuine kitsune look instead of making it look like a costume if that makes sense. Which I seldom do, so thank you for enduring my verbal chaos. Yeet the ears, then I painted a layer of Liquitex matte varnish to smoothen out some rough patches on the lips. I let that dry overnight, sprayed with MSE and started on the face up. I had to redo it a couple of times because I didn't get it right, but I think it all came down to me not trusting the process. I went quite heavy on the blush department and she got this little nose. I wanted to make it look like her eyes were glowing and I blushed her joints while at it with my airbrush. Are they going to show? Nope. Do I still care? Yep. Have I said I love my airbrush the last couple of minutes? No, I love my airbrush. Then I used the same paint to paint the markings. I free based a lot, just adding and removing and giving up and redoing it. But it ended up pretty cool. Some more airbrushing later and I could move on to enhancing colors. I almost forgot about the white pencil, it makes things pop on the face. I also used it on the markings to make them less flat. I was almost done with some defining lines inside the eyes, white acrylic paint freckles and a couple of white asymmetrical dots. Then I added some sparkle because I have a lot of it. Glitter glue is life. Finally I glossed the lips and nose with Tamiya Gloss Varnish. Perfect symmetry is not my thing, though it gives her a cocky expression, I approve of that resting bitch face. Next I painted some improvised tattoos on her stomach, cherry blossoms, I really want to get better at painting and I've tried the practice makes perfect thing, but the only thing that helps me forward in my art is watching others paint and analyzing how they do it. Mixing that with a healthy dose of reference pictures also helps. Next is hair and I chose white as a neutral base. After painting the scalp and letting it dry, I used wires for the ears. It had to be done before the hair since I wanted to mark out where to put them. This is going to be great. I wanted the hair to be long so I used synthetic hair wefts and this time I went brave so I hot glued it in place. For the parting, I carved out the top a bit, folded a piece of weft, glued them together and pushed it in. This way it will hide the wefts underneath because it's enough hair to cover it. Then I fold it over and do the same thing on the other side. I pour a lot of glue inside, smoosh it around with my X-Acto knife handle and put it away for drying. Next I make three incisions inside the neck hole, trim the neck peg and gently put the head back on. Then I use my embossing tool to heat set the hair. I think boiling water works better but I've ruined the face up that way before so I don't dare. Next up, ears. I hot glued fur fabric onto the frame, nothing super exciting honestly.
I trimmed the fur a bit because it looked shaggy, I cut away pieces of fabric but I didn't record it so there is that. Next are the tails. I made this template or pattern if you will and I was so dedicated to making all 9 of the tails. I went all in with this. I was shaving the edges to make it easier to sew and stuff. My vacuum cleaner worked overtime, she deserves half of my revenue. So I made these little sausages, sewed them with paper underneath because it helps rip the paper and turn them all right side out. I think I watched the new Resident Evil series while doing this, then I made a bunch of aluminium sticks to add inside them so one could bend them. They're not meant to be bent a lot, otherwise aluminium is not sturdy enough on its own, but for these it was okay. Finally I hot glue the ends and sew them into threes. Hot glue everywhere. To make them more manageable I hand sewed them three at a time then I sewed them all together. I first wanted them to be like a halo behind her but instead decided to make them fall like natural relaxed foxtails. So this is what I had to work with at this point. Suppose you're new to customizing? Welcome, this is normal. I was afraid the tails would be too heavy and the plastic would break so I reinforced the hole with a thermoplastic. Melt it in hot water until it's transparent, then when it cools down it hardens and becomes super durable. I punched a hole in one of the tails then used a screw and brick to attach it to the back. It's super stuck and won't come off easily and I'm glad I added the thermoplastic because it made it much much better. They're really heavy, like heavy. With the tails and ears finished I could move on to clothes. I had no soft white fabric that I was satisfied with so I dissected the arm of one of my shirts. I wear black and I've only worn it once so it felt good to use it. I made a circle skirt which is what it sounds like, a huge circle with a hole in the middle for the waist. Then I made this panel thing for the front, I ironed some interfacing to make it stable then sewed the edges. The under thread tension was a little bit too high which you can see here but it's okay because it won't show. More airbrush, this time on fabric and I love the effect. Yep, I should have ironed the fabric before doing this, oops, I'll have to cover some patches later. I glued this rope along the edges of the panel making three twists at the bottom, super glue didn't work so I switched to fabric glue, it smells but it works really well. I added this ribbon for contrast, gluing the edge instead of burning it. Then I made a little tassel after making this plastic template thing, around it goes a couple of times through the hole and then tie the knot, it's really simple but quite fiddly. I pull it off, add a hoop and cut the ends. Sew it on just in case, I bent a little nail art stud and glued it on, mostly for decoration. Then I thought meh, might as well and added more tiny studs. You have no idea how many decisions are made on a meh, might as well basis. I glued a piece of ribbon for the waist, put paper clips and left it to dry, then I glued a panel onto it. So far so good, I added a gold string so I could tie it around her waist and then I finished it. Next I made some kimono sleeves, pretty easy and straightforward, two rectangles that get sewn leaving two holes at the top, again I used paper underneath which was a lifesaver when sewing this flimsy fabric. I used fabric glue to seal the edges then they get turned right side out and ironed flat. Cool, cool, I love them, but they also needed a soft pink gradient, so it was time for more airbrushing. Airbrush! I made some tiny bonsai trees out of wire and thought it would be cool to make some bonsai ornaments for the sleeves. So I used more fabric glue, string and a template underneath a piece of plastic and patience. A lot of patience. I had to let it dry between pieces of string. Finally, after drying it kind of completely, I cut the ends and peeled them off and I think it's pretty cool so I'll maybe do something similar in the future. I added more glue to the underside and pressed it onto the sleeves. Time for some final fitting. I wasn't going to give her a top but it felt empty so I decided on a capelet. The base is made like the top part of a kimono then I added lace and ribbon onto it. 
it won't come off and this is one of the times I prioritized looks. Usually I want the clothes to be detachable but not this time. Then I added these strings and regretted it because it looked like too much country music so I pulled them off. Next I glued two tiny pieces of ribbon to attach the sleeves to the top and then I glued small studs onto it. While airbrushing the sleeves I figured I might as well airbrush the flowers in the same color. So I'm buying white paper flowers from now on because it's so easy to paint them in any color I want, it's super duper easy. I also airbrushed the ears and the tip of the tails. Let's cover up the ugly patches with flowers! And there we go, lots of flowers and no regrets. The top felt a bit empty, so I glued some petals and got some mermaid vibes, then I added some more tiny details. I have these glass balls, I pushed some dried flowers inside them and added fishing lines as strings. They don't sound, but they look great. some tiny paper strips later and I could add them to the ears. I sewed them on to be sure, plus I could adjust the length before deciding how far down I wanted them. Then I made some hair ornaments by cutting beads and gluing them on. With a lot of effort, I made two braids on the sides, which I then fastened behind her neck. Looks intentional. And yeah, well, now I can make her stand. Since her tails were so heavy, I wanted to make the base bigger, which meant making another mold. So I used this silicone, which is mixed with hardener. I carefully measured, made a mess, mixed too little, and had to redo it because my mind didn't brain, but eventually I managed. After 24 hours, I cut the excess and took the lid out to check if it was okay. Then I put it back to protect it from dust. Next, I mixed the resin as usual. It says not to use weight, but I'm a rebel and haven't had any trouble, so yeah. Measure the two parts, add a bunch of gold flakes and mix mix mix. Take the lid out and pour the resin. I added some leftover flowers that have been sealed with Liquitex gloss varnish. I should have added two layers of it because some dark patches formed that I tried covering up with gold flakes. In the end I also added some green dried flowers. Super duper pretty, time to demold. Since the doll is so heavy, I drilled and added a wooden dowel instead of just a wire. It's meant to support the tails, so I didn't put it in the middle, I put it slightly off. Then I added wire on top so one can bend it to fit. Finally, I added more gold thread to make it look and hold better, and then after some trial and error, I was finished with everything. So right now I'm into making terrariums and stuff. When I started writing this manuscript, I was cutting glass and ordering stuff to make tiny terrariums. Now I have also ordered different isopods. I wake up thinking about insects and soil and stuff, and it's the last thing I think about before falling asleep, and yes, I'm being tested for ADHD. It's quite an extensive thing, and I'll get back to that later. With that being said, my latest hyperfocus is keeping me from crafting at the moment, and uh, I really do appreciate your patience. So this is what I started with, and this is the result. I am happy with her. It was a lot of work, but I loved it. Thank you so much for watching. May your hard drive never crash. Until next time, bye!